and welcome back. Can you believe it? We are on week number four. Thanks for sticking it out so much. A lot of people would have said, it's too hard work. Give me the easy way out. I just want to pop a pill. I don't want to discover who I am and understand how I can release this anxiety and depression. So well done for you. Give yourself a pat on the back. I salute you. I hope the value system that you did last week has given you some great insight and made you understand what makes you tick. Because once you understand that already, you can change things in the perspective that we spoke about in week two. So today I've got something very exciting to share with you. And what I want you to do is to have a very open mind, what I'm about to, to share the technique to release emotions from the body. Let me tell you a little story, in fact. For years I've known about this technique and I'll be like, nah, this is just way too simple. You know, we're always looking for that holy grail and that one thing and we try and make it so complicated that's really going to help us. And then we miss the most basic thing that can shift us. So as I'm about to teach you this technique, be open to it as you did with all the things that can change your state. Be open with this, give it a go and let me know. So ideally what I want you to do is, is to have a list of emotions that you battle with and write down at least five of these. Now, I want you to go back to that list. I want you to grade what is the most important thing for you or the thing that ticks you off the most or the most intense feeling you have. So let's say, for example, if you have anxiety, I want you to write anxiety about what be more specific it could be anxiety about being late okay what else are you anxious about i'm anxious about um drinking enough water i'm giving you silly examples or maybe it's not even a silly example but just go with the flow see if you can be as specific as possible now you go back and you say out of those five things which one i feel the most what is the most intense emotion that you feel? And we're going to start with that one. And I want you to grade it out of 10. So let's say I'm anxious I'm going to be late. 10 out of 10. If I know I'm going to have to be somewhere for an appointment, I already feel like um, the day before, oh, what's going to happen when I'm late? Think about it when you write an exam or you maybe have to go for a flight internationally. You like, and you have to wake up early in the morning. You can't sleep the whole night because am I going to... Wake up in time to go. I'm anxious. I'm going to be late. 10 out of 10. So this technique that I'm about to teach you is called emotional freedom technique. It's EFT. And it's based on acupuncture meridians. And the whole purpose of it is, is to tap and tap the emotion away. It releases very deep-seated emotional blockages within our body. There's two interesting books that you might find of value. And the one is called The Secret Language of the Body. If you've visited me before in the practice, I, that book is used very often. And the purpose of that book is to understand when we have signs and symptoms that our body is trying to communicate with us in some way. Now, sometimes what happens is we can intellectualize ourselves out of the situation and say, that doesn't bother me anymore. But your body might still be stuck, stuck in that state. For example, if you look at a person maybe who had a big shock and suddenly they have diabetes and they will say, that shock is done 10 years ago. That, that thing that happened to me, it doesn't worry me at all intellectually. But your body and still having blood sugar problems could show you, hey, I'm still stuck in that state. So the purpose is to release stuck emotions, but you can also use it in the moment if you are anxious or you're feeling low in mood to help you to shift you out of that situation. So EFT can do a few things. So one of the things that it can do, it can help process your anger, overcome depression, it can resolve eating disorders, overcome exam nerves, anxiety, release stress and anxiety. It can manage pain, alleviate panic attacks. It can release the memories of post-traumatic stress disorder. It can even help with insomnia. There is so many things that can help you with. So I'm about to teach you the technique. So if you go Google it, you will see this is the long technique that is being taught. And this is something that you can definitely give a go. 
But as you might have figured out, I like doing things in a very efficient way. So I'm going to teach you my shortcut afterwards as well. If you go onto the form that's on this Facebook um, page with the PDF of the week's lesson, there's a YouTube video link as well that you can follow again if you just want to go back to the video to see how to do it. And then you don't have to go through this whole video. Um, alternatively, I've written for you how to do it as well. So we are now going to tap on I am anxious, I don't want to be late. And you're going to follow what I'm doing. And even if it feels silly, just go with the flow. There's a word that's being used that says, I love and accept myself. If you don't truly believe it, doesn't matter. Just say it. Just go with the flow. Don't overanalyze and get stuck on, but I can't say it because, uh, you know, deep down, I don't truly love and accept myself. Doesn't matter. Just go with the flow on this one. So what you're going to do is you can take both fingers, or, or, or you can take them both hands, and you're going to have your fingers like this, and you're going to tap above your eyebrows, and you're going to repeat. Even though I'm anxious, I'm going to be late. It was the most intense emotion, so we, get ten, we gave it a 10, 10 out of 10. I still love and accept myself for who I am. You move next to your eyes and you say the same thing. Even though I'm anxious, I'm going to be late. 10 out of 10, I still love and accept myself for who I am. Move to under your eyes. Even though I'm anxious, I'm going to be late. 10 out of 10, I still love and accept myself for who I am. Doesn't matter which hand basically between your nose and your upper lip, even though I'm anxious, 10 out of 10, I still love and accept myself for who I am. Now you're going to move between your chin and your lower lip, even though I'm anxious, 10 out of 10, I still love and accept myself for who I am. The next one is just below your collarbone, it's actually on a point called kidney 27, which is an anxiety point, even though I'm anxious, 10 out of 10, I still love and accept myself for who I am. Four fingers this way under the armpits in the midline even though I'm anxious 10 out of 10 I still love and accept myself for who I am and the last one with all your fingers in the middle of your head even though I'm anxious 10 out of 10 I love and accept myself for who I am then what you're going to do is you can take a deep breath in and as you breathe out you can imagine you're breathing that emotion out you're going to ask yourself how intense am I feeling that emotion still? And you might notice that it's dropping from a 10 to an 8 or maybe to a 9. You repeat the whole sequence again. You breathe in and you breathe out and you say, how, how am I feeling that particular emotion still? And you might feel it's, it's fallen down to 6. So when you're at a 10, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to be late. I must set all the alarms. Oh, do, 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 do. What's going to happen when I'm late? Going down the rabbit hole. When you're at a 6 out of 10, you're like, yeah, I'm actually anxious because it did happen to me once. And that's the reason you can kind of then make sense of why you're feeling the emotion so intensely. You might find that the emotion, in most cases, actually never totally goes away. And the reason is the emotion is there to serve you. Because remember, it's trying to protect you from not being late because maybe a past experience has happened. You might have been late when you were in school and you got into trouble. And that's why you're still feeling this way. If you can go back and you remember potentially, when is that first time I felt I'm anxious about being late? And you go back to, let's say it was in school and you were late. You can tap on that. Even though I was anxious when I was in school, you can tell yourself the whole story if you want to. The teacher, she was swearing at me. She humiliated me or whatever happened. Tap on that. Tell the story as you tap. And you will release the deep-seated emotion within the body. So it's quite amazing as when I tap and I teach someone, immediately I am more relaxed. It's quite amazing how that works. And I heard quite a funny story of a patient who recently moved into an old age home and she really didn't want to be there and she was complaining bitterly about all her neighbors i said okay she actually came to me because she started getting shingles over all for it um because of all the stress now living in this environment and she couldn't stand her neighbors i said okay let's tap on it and her words were even though the the neighbors are um I'm trying to think what word you said, um, like assholes. I still love and accept myself who I am because they're stressing me out. 
And as she went on tapping when she got here, she said the assholes were just went away. Then it was just the neighbors. Even though the neighbors are just irritating me. And then afterwards she said, wow, actually where I'm staying is not such a bad place. You could then start seeing the positive of where is there something positive in this new place of hers. So that was quite funny to see in one sec, not even a session, in one tapping sequence, how a word shifted and how things just kind of, let's say, dissolved for, dissolved for her. So it wasn't a problem. Amazing. So emotional freedom technique, it is so important that you can use it. Now, my shortcut is, let's say you stand in a queue and there's people around you, or you're even at your computer, but if you're in front of people, and suddenly you might get annoyed. I don't know, the person behind you is too close to you. The music is too loud in the store, whatever it might be. You can simply tap here or here. So you can say, even to yourself, even though this person is standing nearly on top of me, feels like going to trip me, I still love and accept myself for him. Even though this person behind me is irritating me so much, I still love and accept myself for him. And you will notice after a few taps, you like, okay, I know why I'm so intense about it because I like my personal space and boundary. Okay, I'll be out the shop soon. Okay, does it matter in 10 years time? Probably not. Okay, let me go to the cashier and finish off and get out the shop. That you're not building up so much frustration while you're standing there and the person's nearly dropping all over you. So the shortcut there or there, again, it doesn't matter which hand you use it, whatever it feels right for you is going to work and you only have to tap there or there you don't even have to go like that but what i would suggest is definitely do the long sequence a few times get a feel for how it is and then um, by doing this you will notice that you can use it very effectively and quickly in situations now there's one other thing in nlp which is called open loops which i want to discuss and this is part of the things that makes us feel quite anxious. Open loops is when there's unresolved issues on many things. And the more open loops you have, the more stressed and anxious you're going to be. The way I want you to imagine it is, if you go to the theater and there's a stage, there can only be so many actors on the stage. If there's too many actors, they're all going to bump each other off and they're going to fall off the stage. And that's how our brain works when there's too much stuff going on. And open loops is also part of unresolved situations. So let's say um, you've got an open loop of, um, I wonder if this person's going to invite me to their birthday party. Because you really want to go, you wish they're going to invite you, but I wonder if they're going to invite me to the birthday party. And every now and again that thought pops in, but it creates a bit of stress and anxiety. Then you might be have an open loop of, I need to write exam, I wonder what I'm going to do. It's an open loop. So the way you close the loops is, you answer the question even though you don't have the definitive answer. For example, I wonder if I'm going to be invited to the birthday party, rather to say, I wonder who's going to be at the party or change it, that, or I wonder when they're going to send out the invites. Try and make it, okay, well, maybe by, it's now the 10th, by the 20th, you expect them to send it out. And they haven't sent it out by the 20th, then you can take it further. But until the 20th, I'm not even going to think about it. But then you can, of course, go if you're not invited. Even though I'm not invited to the birthday party, I still love and accept myself for who I am. Then you can start tapping on that emotions well. But we want to close any kind of things that's unresolved in our life to create much more... Um, less stress for ourselves so what you can do is you can write down all the things that you still need to do that feels overwhelming for you and see how you can close that open loop for example one example could be i wonder what i'm going to eat today the way you close that loop is you create a menu at the beginning of the week you have it all listed what you're going to eat then it doesn't create a list what i'm going to eat today what i'm going to make today what i'm going to make for the family as an example, so if it's an open loop, you see how you can close it so it doesn't become an issue for you. So I wonder what stood out for you today. Share for us in the group and I look forward to seeing you live again um, next week. Bye.